Alrighty, this is a quick tutorial on, uh, on building a message handler. So we're going to simulate an image acquisition system. Um, and so our uh, message handler will let us, uh, will give us an architecture that will allow us to do that. And, um, and also, let's see, we'll use the message handler to allow a manual system to become an automated system. So what I really want to do here is I want to have a, um, a, a system that can pull in, say, a, a, an array of data at a time. So I'm going to create an array. I'm going to drop a numeric in there, and we're going to call this uh, new data. And then there's some new data here, and then I'm going to create an image. That can then be all the data. And I'll make some space because we need some controls. So we're going to have um, a couple of different messages. We can, let's see, we'll, we'll get some new data. So that will send us off to our, uh, our vector imager here. And um, this is technically it's an image acquisition because we're gathering a vector and then displaying it. So it's going to be a way of gathering something that would give us a vector of data. And then um, let's uh, process the data. It could be somewhere where we do mathematics. So let's create an indicator that could be um, data average. So that'll be some processing that we can do. And then we can. Um, Maybe have a message to remove bad data. So we'll have some calculation that we do, maybe based on the data, the average data that we can remove. Um, and um, in fact, actually, let's do um, index to remove. So we'll have a control there. And, uh, and I think that'll actually pretty, get me going. So let's see, on the block diagram now. Um, so for my message handler, well, I've got some buttons. So I'm probably going to want to have an event handle, event structure that deals with that. And, uh, and then I want to have my message handler. So I like to start out with a flat sequence structure. And I'll do my best to keep this all on the screen here. In fact, uh, let's see. It's going to get a little tight, but I think we can probably squeeze everything in here. And I'll do my frame before and my frame after, and we can use those for setting stuff up here. But um, I'm going to want two while loops. One for my event structure and one for my message handler. Hold on my control button here and I'll get a duplicate copy. Um, let's see. So for a message handler, I could do uh, could do this using an enum, but I'm going to use strings because then my um, my messages can be, you know, anything that I want. It can be, you know, any text string. And so when I come, when it comes time to adding more um, to this, then I won't have any trouble doing that. So I'm going to go into synchronization. Here we go. And, uh, and it's going to be a queued message handler. So we'll take some queue operations. I'll create a queue. Um, and in fact, to start, I will enqueue an element. And then in order to um, the message handler to work, well, we'll dequeue an element. And, uh, and then we'll use that element in our message handler, which is going to be a case structure. Alrighty, so data type into my queue. It's going to be a string. I don't need to name this queue because I'm just going to use the uh, the queue in and out here if I, if I needed to call this queue from a different VI or something like that. I could give him a name right there. The size is unlimited, create if not found, that should be fine. Um, and then when we're going to enqueue an element, and um, we'll start with an estate called init. I don't really need a timeout on the enqueue operation because if the queue is, is called properly, then I won't have any trouble there. So then we're going to dequeue this guy, so there's the element out. Um, and then I do need a timeout in milliseconds here, because um, if I don't, then what will happen is, is that when I quit this program, it'll, it'll need one more message in order to, to quit, which is going to be a problem. So um, I'll create a constant, and um, 
and give this um, you know, 150 milliseconds, something like that. So if no messages are found, it will, it will run the default message. So that's actually an important thing, is I need to make sure that the default message, and I'll just change this to be an empty string, has, you know, um, doesn't have anything in it, or if, there's, if it is, it's something that I want to run pretty much every cycle, because most of the time, probably not gonna get a whole lot of messages. So then I could have a message called init, and this is where I could do some setup. Let's see, I am going to want a uh, stop button. So I'm gonna create a control. This will give me a stop button on the front panel. There's my stop button. In fact, actually, um, change the mechanical action. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna use the stop button here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the, uh, <coughs> the red X at the top. And so I'm actually gonna hide this control Create a local so that both loops are running off of this guy. Um, for event structures, we can drag this stuff up top. And let's see, here is my event structure side of this program. Oops. And again, I'm going to need a timeout uh, because otherwise this loop will will wait forever. And so again, I can do 150 milliseconds or something like that. And then again, and then in the timeout case, I want to make sure that if there is a timeout case, that um, you know that I'm careful only to put things in here that I want to run absolutely every 150 milliseconds. In this case, there isn't anything I want to do there, but um, but I can uh, right click here to. Uh, add an event case, and I'll go with uh, this VI. We have panel close either um, with the green arrow here or with the red, and so with the red arrow it allows me to actually throw away that event. So if I say, okay, when the user picks panel close, I will create a constant true. Discard that event, so it's like they never clicked it. I've stopped the uh, user's ability to um, See, actually, um, I've stopped the user's ability to, to close the event, but now I can run some other code. And so the code I could run, for example, can be code that says shutdown. Um, let's see what they have here. And so the beauty here then, um, add, a, add a case after shutdown, is that now the message handler is, um, is shutting himself down. So this is just sending the message to shut down and now the, the message handler will shut itself down. So there's other messages that need to run. Um, obviously if there's shutdown messages or if there's something about the hardware, then, uh, then we can run that all in here. But everything's basically happening here. The event handler basically just sends messages. If we get a panel closed, we'll send a shutdown message. We're going to send some more messages over here when we get these buttons. And, uh, and that's going to you know, see that that's nice and powerful. All right, so let's see. Well, this thing will actually run, which is good. And uh, so we've sort of got our structure in place. And so I'm just going to want to now go through and say, all right, we'll add an event case for the get data button. We'll have a value change. Um, make sure that these buttons let these set the mechanical action so that they deselect themselves. Um, do that for all three of these because we're basically just going to use these for the user to trigger um, events. So get data button, I'll drag the get data button in here so he gets deselected when he gets read. And then we can again just um, drag in 